This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, that's true. I am the host, but I'm here only very briefly today because this is a bit of a special episode. And what you will hear today is the recording of an announcement that the Mordic community just did in a live stream. So, um, yeah, that's it from my side for the moment. Although you may notice me in the recording a bit later. Uh, anyway, here it is. Enjoy. So we wanted to put on this webinar just to give people an opportunity to learn about some of the changes that are, have been announced today, but also to ask any questions you might have of the leadership team who are all on, well, most of us are on this call today. So to get started, I thought it would be lovely if the leadership team wanted to just kind of come off mute and say who you are and what team you are part of. So if we start with Dennis. Hi everyone, my name is Dennis Emling and I'm um, assistant lead of the product team. Okay, and Eki. Hello together. Uh, my name is Eki Gumbel. I'm located in Germany and uh, I'm the lead of the community community team. And Radu. Uh, Radu, yep. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Radu Zlatiano. I'm uh, located in uh, Bucharest, Romania, and I'm uh, leading the marketing team. And Leon? Well, I'm Leon, I'm also located in Germany, and I'm currently the leader of Team Education. And Nico? Hello, I'm Nico from Austria, and I'm the assistant lead from the community team. Thanks, everybody. So we do have a couple of people who weren't able to make it today um, to this call. We will be doing follow-up calls um, later on next week. On the blog post that we shared today, there are links to some of the webinars that we're going to be holding. So you will have an opportunity to speak to other people who maybe aren't here. And we're on Slack as well if you have any questions that um, you would like to ask the team. The way we'll be managing questions is there's a Q&A button on the webinar. So if you press Q&A, you should be able to ask a question. That will come through to the team. And then we will answer the questions after the presentation. So what we're going to run through today is a little background of what's happened in the community recently in the last quarter. And what we've announced today and what that means for the community. So, just to get started, what's happened recently? We've actually had an awful lot of stuff happening between January, February, March. We wrote a, I wrote a roundup on the community blog, which you can read, which explains this all in more detail and gives you some links where you can go and explore things. And also, we work on Trello boards in the community. So, if you wanted to, you could go and look at the Trello boards and see the work we've been doing. Ultimately, the community is um, divided up into five teams, and this was decided as part of the implementing the governance model. So we have community, education, legal and finance, marketing and product. And I'm just going to give you a very quick whistle-stop tour of some of the things that each team have done in the last quarter. So the community team, these are some of the things that they've worked on. For example, launching the new dashboard and handbook launching a new Mortic Pro account and holding, up, holding our first community sprints. Education have launched the new documentation, which is an amazing improvement on what we had before. We've set up some new forum categories, developing a new knowledge base, and we're in the process of reviewing all of our videos. And the legal and finance team are working on trademark infringements at the moment and working on a budget and updating the trademark policy. We've also, the marketing team have attended the uh, FOSDEM Summit, launched a new website. We're developing personas and we're also about to launch our Mortic Moment newsletter. And the product team shipped the 3.0 Alpha and Beta releases and the Beta 2 release was released just recently. Also 2.16.1 and 2. And we're in the process of developing the roadmap and implementing new models for uh, the way we work on GitHub. We had a super successful community sprint. We had over 60 signups and about 40 people over two days joined to contribute to Mortic. 
and we saw a lot of involvement and engagement there from all over the world. So things have been going really well in the community. And then today we announced a whole bunch of improvements that we are making to the community. So I'll run through those now. So the first thing is the change in product le project leadership. So I, I'm going to be taking on the role of project lead for Mortic with the support of the community leadership team and DB Hurley. And DB will continue to act as the ambassador for the Mortic project. So it's a great honour to be asked to take on the leadership of the community and uh, looking forward to really exciting times ahead. Part of the work we've been doing in the community leadership team is defining what our mission is and what we want to do, how we want to direct the project. Our mission is to help people succeed with Mortic. Unfortunately, the slide seems to be having a problem with loading. And what we've done is we've taken that down into how we're actually going to help do that in the community. So we've narrowed it down to six areas of focus. We're going to be developing the features and functionality in Mortic so that it becomes the tool of choice for marketing automation and a market leader in this area. Improving the ease of use of Mortic for marketers, the people who are using the tool on a day-to-day -day basis. Improving the stability and reliability of Mortic. Improving the way we support people to succeed with Mortic. Enabling organizations to scale Mortic as they achieve success. And to build a community that is self-reliant, welcoming, diverse and engaged. So those are the areas that the community leadership team are going to be focusing at the moment. And some of the updates that we wanted to share with you along this vein from the product team. Where are we now? Well, we all know that we haven't had any major release of Mortic for quite some time. In fact, the last major release was back in 2016 which is a rather long time ago. We've been working quite hard to get the 3.0 release, and that's hopefully going to be coming out at the end of May, which will be the first time we've introduced backwards compatibility breaking changes. And it's a major overhaul of Mortic from the ground up, making things much more future-proof and giving us a really strong foundation that we can build on. So that's a pretty major thing. But ideally, we don't really want to end up waiting that long for the next major release. So what we've been working on is establishing a clear release uh, process that will allow people to understand when they can expect new updates to Mortic, when they can expect to see new features, and when they need to plan to be updating Mortic. So this will help people who use Mortic it will help businesses who rely on Mortic because they know predictably when there are going to be updates. But it also helps contributors because when you take the time to create a bug fix or a feature, you want to know when that is actually going to be put into Mortic. So this gives us much cl more clarity on that. So what we're going to be doing is having patch releases. So that might be 2.16.1 or 3.0.1 which introduce bug fixes on a monthly basis. So every month we will have a release which includes bug fixes. Minor releases, so this would be your 3.1, 3.2. These introduce new features, but they don't break backwards compatibility, and they may also include bug fixes. Those ones are going to be coming on a quarterly basis. So every three months we're planning to introduce a minor release for Mortic. And major releases, these introduce backwards compatibility changes. They may also include features and bug fixes. What we're planning with these is that they will be made when they're required. And it may be that we need to do one next year. It may be that we don't need to do one for a few years. It's basically dependent on if we have dependencies that have been updated because they've reached the end of their support period and we therefore need to update, which causes breaking changes, or if there are particular features that we want to introduce, but that they will cause breaking changes in Mortic. So what we're doing with that is we're saying they will happen as they're required, 
and we anticipate that that will be every few years, but it's dependent on dependencies and other things like that. So this is a very, very clear way of explaining how to expect releases. So we're planning to release MORTIC 3 in May, then we'll have 3.0.1 in June, which will have bug fixes. The next month will be another bug fix release, but then the next month will be a features release. And then there'll be bug fix releases for a couple of months after that, and then another feature release. So hopefully that makes sense. It, it will give us a lot more clarity on when to plan for releases and what's coming up on the horizon. So this is what the minor releases might look like Oops. in terms of a timeline. So if when we release MORTIC 3 in May, and then we'll have 3.1, the next minor release in August, 3.2 in November, 3.3 in February next year. And then potentially, because we've got some updates happening that we need to do to move up to the next version of Symphony, that may well be in May that we look at releasing MORTIC 4.0, which is where we break backwards compatibility. And then August would be 4.1. The other changes that we're introducing are um, to help us with improving the stability of MORTIC. And that is that any changes that come with MORTIC 3 onwards must be accompanied by automated tests. So that helps us to know when we look at that update, whether that's going to break anything, because we can run some automated tests if there's an update in the future. And if it breaks something that's already in MORTIC, it will tell us about that and prevent us from merging that change until that problem is resolved. Now, we do appreciate that this may not be easy, that some people may not have experience in writing automated tests. So the product team are looking at setting up a sprint specifically for us to buddy up people who may not be so familiar with automated tests with someone else who knows how to write them so that we can share that experience. And we've also had the offer of support from some of the developers in the Drupal community who've been through this process already and who've offered to help us upskilling our developers in writing automated tests. So that's on the horizon. If you are skilled in writing tests and you would like to help with that, please do contact the product team. I'm sure they would be very happy to hear from you. The next change we're implementing is documentation. So we're making that mandatory for any pull request from MORTIC 3 onwards to have appropriate updates to the end user documentation and to the developer's documentation where relevant. The reason for this is sometimes, although we have this as a requirement, it hasn't necessarily been strictly enforced. So some of our documentation is out of date. Some of the code examples in our developer docs are no longer appropriate or correct, or they have mistakes. And that's super frustrating when you're trying to learn how to use MORTIC because the information you're being given is, is incorrect. So the education team are working closely with the product team on this to support them with these changes. And if you want to find out more, please do join the product team Slack chat. All of our meetings happen on Slack. You can join in, find out what we're working on, get help with things if you need support. You can also suggest your own ideas at the MORTIC forum. Uh, the ideas category is where we look for potential features to include in MORTIC. You can suggest features, you can upvote features, you can comment on features. But also helping us fix bugs, triage issues, and test new pull requests is a really helpful way that you can contribute to this. So I'm now going to hand over to Dennis to give us a sneak peek of something that's coming up in the near future. Over to you, Dennis. Thank you so much, Ruth. Um, yes, there's... Uh... Uh, there's a lot of things currently changing in the multi community like uh, Ruth just already showed. Um, one of those things we're working on is code governance. And that means that as soon as developers um, introduce new features to Mosaic or bug fixes or anything code related, 
we need to approve them first. So there's a process we need to go through. And that process pretty much hasn't changed since Monte was released. So we're currently um, at more than 200 pull requests, which means that there's 200 either features or bug fixes that we still need to look into to um, introduce them in Matic. Um, it's quite hard for us at the moment to distinguish them, whether they are uh, small or uh, larger changes. So we're working on a process to make that a lot smoother for everyone. And part of that is like Ruth just already mentioned, automated tests, because it's uh, Mozic is a product that is becoming more and more extensive. So there's a lot of different features and it's very hard to test all of those manually for every single change we do. Um, and that's why we expect that the automated tests are going to be insanely uh, valuable for us. So we're really putting a lot of effort into getting this uh, set up properly. And um, yeah, I think that that's it mostly for the code, code governance. So please know that we are working very hard to make sure that if developers introduce new features or bug fixes, <clears throat> that we want to... Um, uh, implement them in Maltic as soon as possible. Right, thank you, Dennis. And over to you next, Aki. Uh, yeah, sure, thank you, Ruth. Um, let me first remind everybody that I am, I mean, we've been talking about the product and development process a lot. Uh, my role is, is to support the community in growing, to, to lead the community team. Um, so my focus is a little bit different, but it all ties into each other, as you will see in a second. And uh, let me also let let me also back up a little bit by saying that um, we all feel that to this day, Mautic is completely unique in its market. It has a, has a ton of advantages and potential. And the sky is the limit, and uh, we also see again and again that. Uh, uh, the interest in Mautic as a product, but also as a community, is, is a global thing, which is, of course, fantastic. On the other hand, we are only now coming to a point where we, we as a community, are finding the right tweaks to really leverage all that potential. And I want to give you a little sneak peek into facets of that. Um, one is product development. Dennis mentioned some of that um and the goal is goal is of course to to come up with a much better product all the time to to increase innovation more and more rapid increase quality and all and uh, that is has related is related to process but it's also related to contributors so uh one important aspect is to make it really easy for new contributors to pick their specific area in, in Mordic, be it segments, focus items, reporting, whatever, you name it. And so it's their area of expertise that they want to make a difference in, um, that they want to work with a small group and then relate to a small group and really uh, earn all the fame and be proud of what they achieve and in a holistic way, by the way, not just code, but also quality, documentation, uh, support, and, and all that. Um, so that, that's an important thing coming up and, and I can't tell you how, how much I'm looking forward to that. It might even be part of the next sprint already. As uh, the team lead for community, the other breakthrough that is really important for me is to embrace our global community and the diverse community that we have and let them all be an integral part of the Mordic family and not just a uh, sort of second-class citizen. Um, even if people are not comfortable with, with uh, English as a way of communication, we are now finding ways to, to let them be part of the family and let them even contribute to the main product. And by the way, um, we, we'll, Ruth already mentioned that we'll do a series of webinars uh, about these changes in other languages, which ties in into the first ones that we will start this uh, this local language communities like Brazil, Japan, uh, Spanish, etc. Those are going to be the pilots, so to say, but but that's only just the beginning. Okay, let me also add that while it's 
fun and rewarding to be, be part of, of an active development uh, like the Mordic community is. Uh, many of us have also built their, their life, their, their, their businesses or, or on Mordic or are in the process of doing that. And uh, today's news are making um, that decision much more attractive, much more sustainable going forward. Uh, I think they're paving the road for a for a much stronger ecosystem and bright future for Mordic as a product, but also show uh, that we as a Mordic community are strong, are in control, are willing and able to control our des destiny ourselves. That is, I think, an important part to talk about too, that uh, uh, the Mordic brand and Mordic as a project is owned by a commercial company, and that's Acquia, and we, we like them a lot they are a perfect uh company to work with and and uh of course we we do coordinate hi highly strategic things with acquia um and specifically the the role of the project lead is appointed by them explicitly uh but but what we are showing you today none of those plans or decisions that we, we have been talking about have been questioned or questioned or otherwise influenced by Acquia. They really let us um, do our thing and let us be the, the father of our own success. And I thank them really much for giving us that freedom. Uh, also by supporting them, uh, by, by supporting us with, with development power um, and, and letting the community blossom as they strive to. So in total, we're really bringing the strengths of open source software development now to, the, to its full potential to the community is really the base of it all and it's it's my my highest interest to support that and i'm looking forward to that and i can't see to i can't wait to see what where we are where we will be in a couple of months or so so let's go Mordic. back to you ruth thanks so much folks for sharing that it's really exciting to hear kind of like what's on the horizon, but not quite be knowing everything. Um, okay, so we're at the end of my slides. Um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask any of us or any general questions that you would like to know, please pop them in the Q&A section and the team will review and answer as we can. Happy think, to take any questions. I think this, this one is for you, Dennis. Uh, the automated testing, is that behavioral testing or, or uh, another level, a different level? It has basically two sides. So one of it is the, um, it tests the technical side of Mautic, which is not really relevant for the end users. But the second one is, um, is quite major, I'd say, because what it does is it will simulate an actual user using Mautic and it goes through different sections of the application. So for example, it clicks on the contacts uh, button in the menu, it creates a new contact. So it actually clicks on buttons, fills out forms, and then uh, once something goes wrong there, because maybe a button has changed uh, to, to a different place or anything else that goes wrong, we are informed immediately. Um, so that is definitely going to help us because what we've seen in the past with, especially with the, um, the last few releases, is that when we introduce a new feature, for example, in the um, campaigns area, then it might be that something in the context area will break. So uh, those tests are going to help us to, to find out the links between different parts of, of Mautic. Um, so yeah, that I think is the most powerful part of the automated tests that are coming up. So it's both unit tests and, and uh, behavioral tests, right? Okay, thanks. Okay, we have another question that's just coming in from Jerry. What is the estimate for any centralized effort coming to fruition regarding trainings, onboarding videos, use cases for newcomers? So that's possibly one for Leon or myself. Leon, did you have anything to add on that? Um, we are currently working on getting just a bunch of uh, tutorials for newcomers and just like the basic how to do Mordic, and this is just uh, on the way and, and the progress of being made. 
And if you have anything add, to add to that, Ruth, you can. <laughs> yeah, sure. So one of the projects that the education team has been working on is a knowledge base, which is the documentation is like how to use the product project. Um, and it's very kind of like formal writing. The knowledge base is going to be more tutorials, how to use use case, best case. Um, uh, my brain has just gone. Best case scenarios. You know, like, yeah, yeah, like how, how best practice. That's the word oh. I was looking for uh, in the knowledge base. So that's in progress. We've got a, quite a lot of articles that we want to write to include in that knowledge base. So if anyone would like to help us with that, that would be super. Another thing, another avenue of that is videos, which you mentioned, so onboarding videos. Uh, Kevin, who's the assistant team lead for education, he's Mr. Video, and he's been reviewing our YouTube channel, prioritizing videos we need to make where there's gaps, where there's specific gaps of things we are not explaining in videos, and videos that are out of date and need to be updated. And again, we're working on improving those and including where relevant in the documentation so that if you're a visual learner and you prefer to watch a video you can watch a video instead of reading the text about a particular area of the documentation and this is also something that we're hoping will be picked up in the summer of uh, season of docs project as well um, it's going to be one element of the end user documentation um, proposal i'd like to, to add that to that, if I may, yeah. um, and that's again the international aspect because uh, we hear from from many of our friends in other countries that English documentation may be helpful for agencies, maybe not, but certainly not for the users. And so they des are desperate for local language mm. tutorials, uh, entry points, documentation. No, not necessarily documentation, but but anything. Um, and so, so that's part of the effort. I mean, Joey asked about the centralized part, and uh, what we've seen so far is a centralized part and, and a good amount of all sorts of documentation. Um, and a lot of these central things, people uh, coming up with, with uh, Nordic tutorials in their local language, some of that is, is uh, sales-oriented, of course. It's, it's a marketing effort, effort and it's uh, due to the lack of official documentation, but it's also uh, absolutely a goal to improve on that, to, to be able to uh, bring the localization that we have in the product also to the documentation. Yeah, and also to add, um, when we migrated to the new documentation platform, we did look at bringing across the French and Japanese translations, but when we actually looked at it, they had become so out of sync with the English translation that it wasn't going to be feasible for us to do that. And so what we're planning to do is we definitely want to be able to have the, the, the documentation in other languages, but what we don't want it to, bit to happen is like one person being the only person who's contributing because it then relies on that person updating. So what we want to do is to have a team of people who take on the responsibility for translating that language and that team of people then translate the documentation and we publish it, but they also maintain it going forward. So that's much more sustainable than one person saying, I'll translate the docs and then they disappear and we can't keep them up to date in that language, which leads to frustration. So all of what Eki was talking about, about engaging local communities will also support that as well. Yeah, and give a structure for that to make it sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, now here's a question about the release schedule. Um, breaking changes, that's true. I mean, Ruth, you, you mentioned Symphony time and again. Of course, there are breaking changes, or they can be breaking changes within, within our own domain, like uh, the, the data model, for instance, and that will also be, uh, be a major release, right, Dennis? Uh, let me think. Yes, it will be, because um, developers also have the opportunity to, for example, develop plugins for Matic, or use the REST API to connect Matic to other applications. 
And if you make changes to, for example, the data model, which could, for example, be um, the contact model, so to say, uh, that is a breaking change. Because it, if uh, plugin developers or users of the, of the REST API don't update their integrations, um, they will just break. So by introducing breaking change, we inform the users so that they know that something is coming which might break their integrations. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm pretty sure that from that reason alone, we will see a 4.0 uh, rather sooner than later because, as Ruth already said, scalability and things like that are absolutely a top priority. And uh, to pre improve on that, there, there are a lot of ideas and a number of that involve uh, changes in the database model. So I, ho I hope it's not going to be too tough, but, but by definition, anything that breaks, um, the backwards comp compatibility is uh, is a major release. So I hope that answers mm -hmm. the question. Yeah. Plus, I think the uh, automated tests are going to be crucial because if you make such fundamental changes mm -hmm. and we don't have automated tests, it's going to be an insane amount of work to actually test through all the different features of Matic again. Um, so that's why we really focus on getting those automated tests um, in there as soon as possible. Yeah. By, by the way, while, while we are talking about uh, the roadmap or the, the release cycle, we did, we did not mention an actual roadmap. So what feature is going to be in what version? And I think it's, it's worth mentioning that while there are uh, strategic milestones uh, attached to certain roadmap uh, to, to certain release. The majority of the features is is uh, not planned top down, but is going to come bottom up by the maintainers or the owners of the certain features in in Mordic. Um, so I really hope we we're going to see a firework of new new features from from all areas of Mordic in, in every feature release now. And that's, again, that's, that's really depending on, on the crowd of, of uh, our contributors. And uh, by empowering that, I, I'm super excited about the outcome. So, Ruth, do we have more? Um, I'm not seeing any more at the moment. Does anyone else have any questions they would like us to answer? If you do, don't hold back. Pop them in the um, Q&A section and they'll come through. I guess one of the questions that people have asked me is why has it taken so long to get Mortic 3 out when we started working in November? Um, is that something you can speak a bit to, Dennis? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the question everyone wants the answer to, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a quite a recurring uh, question, so it keeps coming back. Um, the thing is, it, it's just taking a lot more work than expected to uh, actually release it, um, because there's uh, there's such fundamental changes happening in Baltic at the moment. To give you a, a rough idea, there's almost 4,000 changed files so far in Baltic 3. Uh, so there's a lot of aspects in the whole application that um, that were changed. Uh, part of it is also that there were larger chunks of Matic as an as an application that we had to split into smaller chunks um, to make sure that they are uh, testable, that they are easier to maintain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Yeah, I really hope that uh, on Wednesday we can actually release Mautic 3, but it will also depend on you, the users of Mautic, to actually test and see um, if you see any problems with the, with the Mautic 3 release. So um, there's been some commu communication about the uh, Mautic 3 beta version. Um, a few days ago there was a second beta version released. So uh, please, if you have some time, Check it out, test it, and see if there's anything uh, that doesn't work as expected, because then we can optimize for the final release as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, it, it's taken a while, but we're very, very close, and I think everyone is very excited to get this uh, release out of, out of the door. Yeah, absolutely. It has been a, a humongous effort by everyone involved. So, yeah. Okay, and... Just had a message from John Linhart. Big thanks for what you all do for the community. And I would echo that as well. I think you're all amazing people. And the effort that goes on behind the scenes by the people who have been stepping up in the leadership team often goes unnoticed by people. Uh, but believe me, they have been 
putting in an enormous amount of effort over the last few months. So thank you from the community via me and John. Yeah. To everyone. I think I speak for the whole of the leadership team. If I thank you in person for, for all the work you did in, in, the, you. in the last many, many months as a community manager. And I, I love the fact that you are now full-time on board as a project lead. I have a lot of respect for, for, for DB and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for, for what he did so far. But, but uh, mm. at this point, we really need uh, full-time and, and full fo focus. And so I think that's a perfect solution that DB came up with, with uh, to, to have you in that role, to have him in, in a, a consulting and ambassador role that, that is still helping the product, product, uh, project with, with all his experience and knowledge, uh, but, but also it, it empowers us, the community in, in total, um, mm -hmm. to push forward as, as good as we can. And that's a lot. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So I don't see any more questions on the Q&A. If, uh, if you do have any other questions, then do feel free to reach out to us on Slack. Um, we have got some webinars coming up with our international community on Wednesday next week. We've got one with the French and German community. We're just in the process of finalizing dates and times with the Spanish and Portuguese speaking communities. So if anyone else would like to run a call, a webinar, a podcast, anything like that, then do get in touch. So anything else any of the leadership team would like to ask or mention or any questions they have maybe? No? Okay. So thank you all for your time and we look forward to the future of Mortic. So have a great weekend and we'll see you in the community. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye.